Well, this was a, uh, actually, it was a Tamukuan Indian, small Indian village at Bulwer Springs. And a lot of Indian sites around the prairie, of course, which had been here from thousands of years. Uh, but there was no gains. Well, there were several settlers and plantation owners and uh, people like that that were moving into the area. And, uh, but there was no Gainesville. And uh, the county seat for Elytra County was Noonansville, which is three miles, was, was three miles north of uh, Elytra. It uh, no longer exists except for the cemetery. The, uh, the decision was made to put a railroad from Fernandina to Cedar Key, by, led by David Uly, and uh, they wanted to go on some high ground, and there's a ridge through Alachua County uh, through this area. So they were going to bypass Noonansville and uh, bring it through this area. So in 1853, there was a meeting called at Bulwar Springs of the citizens of Alachua County. So they had the town meeting and uh, voted after an all-day discussion and so forth and a vote to move the county seat from Noonansville because most of the settlers were settling in this area around Gainesville, or what we call Gainesville today, and they voted to move the county seat and create this new town. And then there was discussion as to what the name would be. And the story is that a fellow named Lewis that owned a, a large farm uh, wanted to be named Louisville, and the uh, the deal was struck with between him and Major Bailey, who owned most of the property that later became Gainesville, and whose house is on Northwest Sixth Street now, the oldest house in the county. Uh, they would name it Louisville if they voted to keep it at Noonansville, and name the new town Gainesville after General Edmund P. Gaines. General Gaines, very interesting man, uh, who was. Uh, general uh, and he served in the Mexican War and in the Seminole War and he's a fascinating man because there are 17 or 18 towns named Gainesville. Gainesville, Georgia, Gainesville, Texas, Gainesville, Tennessee, the list goes on and on and one was Gainesville, Florida. Now he must have been very charismatic to be able to have people everywhere he went and stayed for any length of time people would want to name their town after him. But anyway, that's how Gainesville got its name. So that was in 1853. Then, right after the uh, war, Gainesville incorporated, and uh, but that was voided by the Reconstruction Act, and then they reincorporated again in 1869. Uh, if you look on the Gainesville seal, uh, there's a train, which is the Fernandina Cedar Key Railway, and 1869 is on there. That's the official incorporation date. But the original town was small. The downtown was around the courthouse area. The original plat was like four or five blocks in each direction, square. The town streets are totally different than their name today. Uh, they had several different names over time. And the town, the, uh, the, I think it was 43, 44 acres or so, or maybe 64 acres total, it was purchased from Major Bailey, who'd come here from uh, Alabama, and a guy named Nehemiah Brush, and the total cost of the downtown was uh, for the 64 acres was uh, I think $642 or something, very cheap. And then in 1886, they built the big, the bigger red brick courthouse, and the original wooden one cost 5,000. The red brick courthouse costs uh, 55,000. Then the, what I call the decades of the disasters occurred. First. They had the major fires. They burned down the city, the, the city at various times, and they had to rebuild with brick building. Second, they had major freezes that, in the 1890s that wiped out the orange industry. And third, they had major yellow fever epidemics uh, that came through the big one in 1888, in which the town was blocked off in quarantine for several months, and 50 some odd people died. Uh, and you would and you would have thought then, and then a little later, I guess 20 years later, the boll weevil sort of wiped out the cotton industry, and then phosphates were dug out. They had to go south of Lotcher County to get four phosphate. So their major industries were gone. You would have thought that there again, uh, they would go into the doldrums. That didn't happen at all. They began to raise other crops, fruits and vegetables, celery, tomatoes, peaches, you name it, uh, everything that they, they, they still raise today here. 
1905, the Buckman Act was passed to create the, uh, the three major universities, two uh, west of the Swanee, one being Florida A&M for blacks, folks, the second being Florida College, State College for women, for females, and the third being on the west side of the river was the University of Florida. There was a big fight and debate about where it should be put, and Lake City wanted it badly. They already had a, a little University of Florida. There was a college there, Columbia College. They changed the name to the University of Florida. So they had space and buildings, and they offered that to put the University of Florida there. But uh, some individuals worked very hard. Ja actually, it was, uh, it was uh, Matheson that worked very hard, uh, uh, James Douglas Matheson's son, Chris Matheson, and Major Thomas of the Thomas Hotel fame that worked very hard to get the university to come here. And the thing that turned the tide and made the legislature vote to move the University of Florida, the little one from Lake City here, and create the big University of Florida was uh, free water. Well, it came here, the first buildings were built in 1906. The first building was named Buckman Hall after uh, Buckman, who, who had the Buckman Act to, to produce three universities instead of six or eight little teeny colleges all over the state. They just disbanded those and made the three major universities. And then the second building was named Thomas Hall after Major Thomas, who worked very hard to get it here. And then other buildings were added using the, 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 the Gothic collegiate style architecture that was, that was done for 20 years or so as the buildings were added all over. And they gradually added the colleges and gradu gradually added the uh, you know, increase the faculty and the students. My father came here in 1916. This was 10 years after it was open. It was still a very small school, probably three, four, five hundred students here. He lived in Buckman Hall, and he actually, as a job, milked the cows that brought milk to Buckman Hall to the to the dining hall. There, it was a dining hall in there for the students.